Hey, it's Bryce, Go Next 14, starting up a new series on my channel. This is going to be my NCAA 13 Offline Dynasty, and I decided to get things started with the Purdue Boilermakers. One of the teams in the Big Ten Conference, they're not one of the best teams in there, so it's going to be some tough competition, but they are one in, in one of the uh, Power Six conferences in college football, so I decided to make things a little bit challenging, but at the same time, give myself a chance to uh, do something great. Here is Penn's, uh, not Penn State's Purdue schedule. We start off at home against Kent State. Then we take on number 24, Notre Dame. We've got Eastern Michigan and Marshall in our outer conference schedule. And then we start off the conference schedule with Michigan, Wisconsin, and Ohio State. So it's going to be a tough slate for Purdue and the boys. Hopefully, I will do them justice. Anybody who's a Purdue fan out there, I hope I don't make your team look too bad. But um, it's going to try to get at least three wins before we head into that conference play. Uh, that Notre Dame game is going to be tough, but I should be able to beat my other two opponents. So we're going to go ahead and jump into week one, which is Purdue versus Kent State. And here we go with Purdue taking the field in their black unis. They're led by senior quarterback Caleb Turbush. They also got senior wide receiver Antavian Edison and senior running back Ralph Olden. Uh, going up against Kent State, a team from the MAC Conference, who I have yet to play in any of my NCAA football games, so I decided you know take on somebody new. They're led by senior quarterback Spencer Keefe and senior wide receiver Tyshawn Good on offense, and they're also led by senior middle linebacker Luke Patton on defense. So those are the guys to look out for in today's game, and hopefully they will make an impact um, as long as they get the win. So we're going to get things started off here with Kent State kicking off to Purdue, which means that uh, Kent State will be getting the ball at the second half. But yeah, this is the opening play of college football. Bring it out to about the 22-yard line. Not that far, but of course, we already got our first studio update. And Boise State gets smacked by Michigan State. We won 30 to 10. Tennessee LeVon Bell had 88 uh, yards and touchdown. And then also Tennessee beat NC State and Minnesota fell to the UL. So I'm probably not going to show too many studio updates. So on our opening drive, it's second and 10 for Purdue. And you're going to see Turbo drop back to pass. And he's got a wide open Edison for first down. So. I plan, I plan to play pretty much of a mix of run and pass. I tend to lean more towards the run game than the passing game. But I will pass if I need to, of course. You know, third and long, second and long situations, those are probably going to be passing plays. Anyway, on that same drive, now we're facing third and three, still in the first quarter. And Bolden gets stuffed behind the line by that strong Kent State defense, which leads to a punt on Purdue's opening drive. So now Kent State gets the ball on their first drive of the game. And they've got a Spencer Keith right there behind the center. So he's going to hand it off to uh, Trayon Durham, if I'm saying his name right. And they get a big first down early on in their drive. As you can see, I'm not sure what happened there with a uh, number. I can't see his name. I think it was 44 34. He um, seemed to slide out of the way on that play. But still, on the same drive. We've got Turbush and Shotgun now. I mean, not Turbush, sorry. Uh, Spencer Keith and Shotgun now. I'm dropping out the pass, and he finds a wide open Matthew Hurdle for a huge game, giving Kent State another first down. And he will, with another studio update, Syracuse with a 3 0 lead over Big Ten foe Northwestern. Um, oh, the game's only four minutes into uh, the first quarter, so it's not much scoring so far. Anyway, same drive. Back and shotgun for Spencer Keith on third and 22. He's going to drop back to pass. He's going to hold it there for a little while looking for old man. Can't seem to find anybody, but then he throws it. And they come down with the catch. The defender, Purdue defender standing right next to him, could not get up in time to uh, knock that pass down. So it's another first down for Kent State. Still in the shotgun on third and nine. Same drive. He'll drop back to pass, and Keith almost gets sacked. He meets a couple of defensive linemen as he tries to get the ball off, but uh, it'll fall short. So on fourth and nine, Kent State's going to go for the field goal to get the opening points of the game. And it's from about 35, the 35 yard line, and it goes right in. So Kent State takes the first points of the 2012 season with a 44 yard field goal from Freddie Cortez. It's now on Purdue's ensuing drive. 
Terry Bush is going to drop back to pass, and he'll find Edison over the middle on that slant route to get him a nice first down. Passing game seems to be working pretty well for Purdue to uh, start off the season. Little, as you can see there, he's got no one around him until he makes a catch. Same drive, second and ten for Purdue. Terbush is going to drop back to pass, and he's going to find Edison once more. It's going to be a, a recurring theme this season, hopefully, with uh, Edison catching 44 balls last season. Um, he's going to be Terbush's main target. And as you can see, another studio update of Nebraska only up 7 0 on Southern Miss halfway through the first quarter. Uh, Nebraska joined the Big Ten Conference last season, so they're ranked 19th this year. They should be a tough opponent if Purdue ever has to come across them in upcoming seasons. So on the same drive, Terry Bush is now in shotgun formation on second and 10 late in the first quarter. He's going to drop back to pass, but he holds the ball too long and he meets a defensive lineman. For the sack, I do believe that was defensive lineman. No, that wasn't defensive lineman. That was the middle linebacker, Luke Batten, who I told you about earlier in the game. I told you he was making an impact. Penn State have to turn. Uh, Penn State. I keep saying Penn State. Purdue have to turn over the ball. And on the next drive, uh, Spencer Keith finds Tyshawn Good over on the left side of the field for a nice catch and run for that first down. He does get tripped up and eventually fall, but the damage was already done by that time. Same drive now, and it's third and 13 as the first quarter is getting ready to come down to a close. And Keith will drop back in shotgun, and he'll find Matthew Hurdle wide open for another first down down on the left sideline. And Purdue is having early struggles trying to stop the passing game, but the first quarter will come to an end with King State holding a 3 nothing lead on Purdue. Hopefully, uh, Purdue can step up his defense and give Kent State the beating that it so rightly really deserves. Later on, same drive in the second quarter. Spencer Keith is going to drop back to pass on third and 11, but he is picked off. He is picked off by, um, and I have the name written down here, and I don't seem to find it anymore. It's Frankie Williams. There we go. And he's going to run it all the way back for the touchdown. About a 94-yard interception return for Frankie Williams, and, of course, with the weird record books in NCAA Football 13. That is going to be a new college football record in Division One, at least. So Purdue's going to take the 7-3 lead. Good thing for that because the offense is still struggling. Can't really do much, but on Kent State's next possession, Spencer Keith finds a streaking wide receiver down the line for another first down. He gets him a lot, bunch of yards there. Same possession. It's going to be first and ten. Keith will do the play action pass, and he'll find Matthew Hurdle once more for another first down. As you can see, Spencer Keith, he's only completed 8 of 14 passes, but he's thrown for 174 yards already. We're not even at halftime yet. Not even close to halftime yet. Halfway through the second quarter. Keith's going to drop back the pass. And he has a touchdown, but Hurdle drops the pass. Wide open in the end zone on that um, in route. He doesn't get the touchdown. He can't hold on to the ball. Kent State's going to be forced to kick a field goal. And this would make the game 7 6, except for the fact that he shanks it and he misses it wide left. Kent State, as you can see, the players aren't too happy about that turn of events. And the coach behind him trying to fire up his team to get the ball back and give Kent State a better opportunity to score. On the next possession, Terry Bush is going to drive back the pass on third and eight, and he makes an unwise decision as he is picked off, throwing the interception to Luke Wallet. It, um, the strong safety who was sitting there waiting for that pass to come to him, as you can see, ran out of options as Turbush was hit as he threw the ball, and Wallace just comes up and snatches it away from Gary Bush, who was open on that play earlier. On Kent State's drive will come to a halt, and they're forced to kick another field goal, and once again, Kent State will miss once more keeping the score at 7-3 so right now the score should be 9 for me because those are two easy field goals um, I did lower the field goal accuracy on my sliders to 35 so that's what's called in that it makes things a little bit more interesting but Kent State will get back the ball later on in the second quarter and Spencer Cubes going to drop back the pass and he finds a not a wide open receiver a receiver in double coverage who makes the chance to jump up and grab the ball over both of his defenders for the set, not the touchdown, I'm sorry, <laughs> for the first down. 
So now Kent State's third and 17 inside Purdue territory. Second quarter is winding down to a close, and he finds Matthew Hurdle for the touchdown as he stumbles his way into the end zone. Hurdle makes sure he doesn't drop this one and like the pass he dropped earlier in the game. As you can see, Purdue is running a zone defense, if I'm not mistaken, and Hurdle found a little soft spot in it. He was able to get the catch, and by the time someone got over to him, he was already about a yard shy of the end zone. So Kent State will now take a 10-7 lead with that touchdown. So right before the half, Purdue is going to try to get one last play in, and Turbush will drop back to pass, and he's one up, and it is caught. It is caught for a first down and then some, but unfortunately, the pass causes the wide receiver to fall down trying to make the catch. Um, it's Raheem Mostert right there with the catch, but fortunately, as I said, he was able to fall down. Kent State touches him down, and this first half will come to an end with Kent State holding a 10-7 lead. Purdue is in rank, but this is definitely an upset alert game for the fans in West Lafayette. As you can see, they're not too happy about being down going into the halftime, but the Kent State players are definitely excited to be holding a lead through the first two quarters. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the third quarter about halfway through as Kent State and Purdue kind of went back and forth with nobody really doing anything significant. So halfway through on first and ten, it's going to be Kent State with the ball and about midfield with the play action pass. Keith is going to drop back the pass and he's going to heave one deep down the right sideline, but it is intercepted by Ricardo Allen, the junior cornerback, who tries to take it back like Frankie Williams did earlier, but he is tackled right around the 35-yard line. So that's going to be Spencer Keith's second interception thrown in the game. He's going to have a word with his head coach right there. That is uh, Daryl Hazel, just his second year at Kent State. And as you can see, uh, right there, Ricardo Allen watches the ball come down and he makes a great jump on the play to pick it off before the wide receiver has a chance to make a catch. Of course, Purdue doesn't do anything on the drive, giving the ball back to Kent State. So they're going to take the ball on first and 10, and Turbush is going to find Tyshawn Good there for his fourth catch. He's got 69 yards already on the game. So that's um, making him a tough target to or Purdue secondary to stop. First and 10. Kent State is going to uh, drop back to pass. That's uh, Spencer Keith throwing to Tyshawn Good once more and hooking up again and getting first down as Kent State moves down the field. So now on the hedge back draw play, they're going to give it to Durham who bustles his way down inside the 10 yard line. As you can see, he's averaging 5.3 yards per rush. So Penn, the Purdue's defense is really struggling to stop the run or the pass. But, uh, Right there, Kent State is on third and goal. They had another touchdown, but he drops the ball once more. Uh, I don't believe that was Matthew Hurdle, but a drop is a drop, and that's two touchdowns now that Kent State has missed out on. And that would make the third field goal they miss out on as the kicker bounces one off the right goal post. So that is, if you do that up, that's three field goals and two touchdowns. That's going to come out to 23 points that Kent State is missing out on. Should be up 33-7 to seven right now. But instead, going into the third quarter, it's just a 10-7 to seven game. Which means Purdue still has life and the fans are holding up to four, signaling the start of the fourth quarter. But Purdue needs to get something and get something started quick. So we're going to go ahead and start the third quarter. I mean the third quarter, the fourth quarter. With Kayla Turbush running the play action pass, he's going to find his wide open tight end over there, Crosby Wright. You can see Turbush not having the greatest game accuracy wise. I don't think he did 9 20 passes, but he has done for 138 yards. Same drive, it's going to be first and 10. Turbush is going to drop back to pass, and he's going to find Crosby Wright once more for an 8 yard game. You can see Purdue using the passing game a little bit more, and now it's second and 8 for Purdue as they're right around midfield with about six and a half minutes to go and he's going to find most search down the right sideline for a first down plus some extra yards as he finds the way tiptoeing down the line so Purdue dry stalls out they're forced to kick a field goal but it falls short it doesn't even hit the crossbar it hits the stand um, that's holding the crossbars up so Purdue gets nothing out of their drive 
but with 2 minutes and 24 seconds left to go in the game, Purdue has a chance to get the ball back on 2nd and 10. Terry Bush makes a nice little run there, could have had the first down, but seeing the two linebackers creeping up on him, he decides to uh, take the hit, get the 8 yards, and hold on to the football. So now on 3rd and 2, he's going to drop back pass on a short pass. He'll find Thomas for the uh, touchdown. I'm sorry, that's not Thomas. The game has the wrong name. It's actually supposed to be O.J. Ross, but the game has him as freshman Tommy Thomas. Second and ten with a minute 44 to go. He's going to find O.J. Ross down the sideline for the touchdown. And finally, after three and a half, almost four full quarters, the Purdue offense finally does something significant with the touchdown pass right here. Like I said, the game has the wrong name. It has this as, um, not freshman, I said freshman, senior Tommy Thomas when it's actually junior O.J. Ross there, so you're going to see the wrong name. But the touchdown just Purdue a 14-10 to 10 lead late in the fourth quarter. And as you can see on the game track, Purdue really stepped their uh, defensive line game up and got to the quarterback a bunch of times. They had, if I remember right, it was... They had eight hurries in the game, which led to two knockdowns and five sacks. There we go. Right there, you see it on the screen. Kent State will have one last chance to try to get this game in their favor on 4 for 13 with under a minute left. Spencer keeps going to drop back the pass, and he's got a wide open man, but he throws it just an inch or two too far. And that's going to lead to a turnover. Purdue will wind down the clock with a couple of uh, victory formation QB kneels, and that's going to end the game for. Purdue surviving a week one. Um, I can't even say it's a, a, a cupcake opponent, but because they, they gave Purdue a run for their money, but Purdue will survive and win 14 to 10 in week one. This game was actually supposed to be against Eastern Kentucky, but uh, for NCAA 13, they would change that to a FCS opponent. Um, and me not being one to give you guys a game against the FCS school, I decided to make it this more interesting. Who was also playing the FCS opponent week one, so you know we can make this a good game. So Kent State will fall to only one of the season. Caleb Turbush is your player of the game. 16 for 34 passing for 253 yards and that lone touchdown right there. He also threw an interception in the game as you saw earlier. Purdue will advance to 1-0. And there you are, the highlights of the game right there. That's uh, Frankie Williams with the first score for Purdue. The uh, 94 yard interception return that gave Purdue the early 7-3 lead. Of course, Kent State Got back into the game right there. Spencer Keith finding his man. Um, I keep forgetting names. I'm sorry about that. Matthew Hurdle for the touchdown pass that gave Kent State 10 7 lead. There's your touchdown. I mean, touchdown. There's your interception by Ricardo Allen that prevented what possibly could have been another touchdown for Kent State. We ended up leaving 23 points on the board. That's going to be the story of the game with three missed field goals and two drop passes in the end zone right there. The play of the game for me, anyway, is OJ Ross late in the fourth quarter, under two minutes with the touchdown. As you can see, Purdue was outgained by Kent State 272 to 398 yards of total offense, but the passing yards um, for Kent State was really what had got them get in the game 339 of those. Caleb Turbush, as you can see from the play of the game stats, he was 16 for 34, 253 yards, a touchdown, an interception, and sacked twice. Ralph Bolden didn't really do much as he only had 27 yards on 18 carries. Uh, his longest was just 8, but averaging a yard and a half per carry didn't really, do, didn't really help out the Purdue offense. So that's going to have to change in the latter weeks. As you can see, Caleb Turbush, he had negative 8 yards because he was sacked twice. But, um,. That stat will hopefully change as well in later weeks if Purdue can get their running game moving. And Tavian Edison with five catches for 64 yards. Uh, Bolden also had 14 yards catching for uh, on three catches. And as you see, it says Thomas, but it's really O.J. Ross with three receptions for 79 yards and a touchdown. Um, will Lucas led the Purdue defense with nine tackles. Uh, Ricardo Allen had seven tackles on the game and the interception. And on the defense is going to be Mr. Ryan Isaac with five tackles and two sacks for Purdue. And uh, it's, a, it's Zinwa, if I can say his last name right, also had five tackles and a sack as well. And um, Kaween Short, the defensive tackle, he also had a sack on the uh, four of the five sacks right there on the game. 
So for Kent State, Spencer Keith was 19 for 42 with 339 yards, threw a touchdown, but he was intercepted twice and sacked five times, helping him to uh, fall short in the game. Trey on Durham, 69 yards rushing on 18 carries with his longest being 20 yard game, and he also had 44 yards, I guess, after the carry. Doesn't really make sense. Matt Hurdle had six receptions for 124 yards and a touchdown. Tyshawn Good had five receptions for 90 yards, and Kyle Crum had three catches for 74 yards for Kent State. For the defensive side of the ball for the Golden Flash, Luke Batten had nine tackles, seven of them solo. He also had a sack. Luke Wallet had five tackles and an interception. Three of those uh, five tackles were solos and two of them were assisted. He also deflected a pass. But Freddy Gortez is probably going to be the GOAT of the game for Kent State, missing three of his four field goals. And I think the crazy thing about it is the one he made was from 44 yards out, but he misses one from inside 29 and another one from inside 39 yards for the Golden Flash. And Next week, Purdue is going to be taking on number 24, Notre Dame, in South Bend for the Battle of the Shalila Trophy. And as you can see, Notre Dame is the dominant team. So stay tuned for next week as we take on the Fighting Irish. Have a good day.